Now, you also participated in a group called the uh, Chipolatas, uh, which, um, who are flint knappers. Yeah, I, li I li like to work with the Chipolatas, and they did excellent work, and I uh, learned how to, how to make an arrowhead, and similar to the way an Indian would make it. Uh, you find out the texture of, uh, of the vaculites, and you find out the texture of flint, and, and some of the materials that the Indians used, and some of it's heat treated, some of it's not. Mm -hmm. We find out that the Indians heat treated a lot of their a lot of their flint and heat treated a lot of their navaculite. It made it flake a lot smoother and a lot easier. It was easier to work, mm -hmm. uh, especially with flint. Flint's hard, durable material, but a heat treat that stuff to work would flake uh, very good, almost a glassy finish on some of these points. So it was really a process that the early Americans were using a manufacturing process and not just a matter of just picking up stone from the ground. No, they just, uh, they, they uh, had uh, uh, sites where they went, mm -hmm. places where they uh, got the vaculite. Uh, in Arkansas they had places where uh, the, this piles and piles of this broken vaculite where Indians had been in there mining that the vaculite, getting the, the vaculite out uh, for the use in the manufacturing of arrowheads. Same thing in, in, in Texas. This, uh, they were had a site where they go in and get flint and would break it up, you know, and, and, and carry it home with them. And then when they, after they got home, they take it home with them, they would make, make it into uh, arrowheads and stuff. But I think among the Indians, like everybody else, they had people who were experts at uh, and napping and they made arrowheads and things and uh, we find a lot of arrowheads as you can almost on some of these sites as you can tell was probably made by the same man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they used a number of things to make arrow points. I've, we have found deer antlers where they uh, cut off the ends of deer antlers and drill a hole in it and use that for uh, arrow points and they use copper uh, up in Arkansas. They a lot of copper in it. I found in Roseboro Bottoms over north of Texarkana uh, several copper points where they had rolled, hammered and rolled and, and made it like an ice cream cone and slipped that up on the end of a, uh, a shaft and made an ideal arrowhead mm -hmm. and gar scales. We found a lot of instances where they've used gar scales mm -hmm. and uh, you take these big old locust trees with long thorns, mm -hmm. that's all, they take those thorns and uh, anything. Uh, it, it, would, it would penetrate. They'd use it for arrowhead. It wasn't always stone points that they mm -hmm. used. They would use bone or they'd use uh, other things. Uh, I found over the years that the Indians, he could find something that was workable, he used it. And easier to transport than That's right. all that it's stone. Mm -hmm. But the, the fact that they were using flints and noviculite, which are not native to Louisiana, implied that they had a very sophisticated trade network so that they could acquire that type well, they of material. Had a great, they had a great trade uh, network. You take Poverty Point, uh, we found stone there and hair points and things there. It's, it's come from Georgia, from Arkansas, and Tennessee, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Just a variety of, of trade routes that they had.